Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and I recently received an email from a subscriber which contained a plot similar to the one shown on the screen. He was wondering what was wrong with his circuit or his measurement. I wonder how many of you recognize what single component this is a plot of. Let's explore the cause of this V-shaped plot and use Sem Smith to dramatically improve the circuit in the next 10 minutes or so. Let's begin with a simple Sim Smith circuit where we are trying to match a 25 ohm frequency independent load to a 50 ohm generator over the frequency range of 1.8 to 54 megahertz. And we're trying to do it in a way where the generator SWR is low and we get a good power transfer out to the load. So if we do nothing at all and leave the two to one SWR there, which is what 25 ohms represents in a 50 ohm system, we can see that the load impedance is 25 ohms. On a square chart, we can see that the SWR is two to one over the frequency range. And we can see that the mismatch loss is 0.512 dB. 0.51 dB should be recognized as a mismatch loss for two to one SWR as I've shown in many uh, previous videos. That is not power that's lost in the generator or, or any, any part of the circuit. It's, it's an opportunity the generator had to generate one watt in this case, but it couldn't do it because the load impedance wasn't appropriate. So the signal we get is half a dB down from the maximum power we could possibly get to the 25 ohms load. The next thing we might want to do is put a 25 ohm resistor in series with the circuit. Now the generator SWR will drop to 1.0 1, 1 to 1. However, the loss now will rise to 3, to 3 dB. 3 dB loss means that half the power is lost in this resistor, half is lost in this resistor. There is no mismatch loss in this circuit because the SWR at the generator is good. However, ha losing half our power is unacceptable. So now let's look at using a transformer in this circuit. This transformer that right now is in the circuit has a 30 microhenry inductance on this side, 15 microhenry inductance on this side, giving us a two to one step down in impedance, coefficient of coupling of one, which is unreasonable. And rather than writing the values in here, I've made a control block that I use to set the values. So I set one inductance value, it sets both of these inductance values based on the turns ratio that, uh, not turns ratio, but the impedance ratio I want between the generator and the load. And we can see a couple things. So if I set this to be an incredibly high impedance, we see the SWR, or the plot on this mist chart being very good relative to 50 ohms. We look at it on the square chart, we see it's very, very good at high frequencies. It rises a little bit, hardly at all, 1.04 to 1 with 100 microhenries. Now 100 microhenries is a lot of inductance, a lot of wire to wind on a transformer. And if we do that, we'll never come up with a coefficient of coupling even close to one. So what we need to do is we need to drop this down. And as we drop this down, what we start to see is the low frequency SWR rising. And it's rising due to the shunt inductance in the transformer. And this is one of the problems you have with the transformer. You have to pick an inductance that's approximately, you know, good enough to be out of the way most of the time, but not unreasonable. So let's say 10 microhenries to start with. At 10 microhenries, we've allowed the SWR at the low end of the band, the low end of the frequency range, to come up to 1.55 to 1. That might be a little bit high, but that's kind of what we have. We look at it on a Smith chart, we, we see the plot from 1.8 to 54 megahertz looking like this. Now let's make this transformer be a little bit more realistic. Point, uh, 1.0 coefficient of coupling is unreasonable. Maybe 0 0.99, 0 0.999 is still unreasonable, but what we see is we start to see this curve start to come up again. And as we drop this down, we see it continuing to come up. At 0 0.995, which is probably the maximum you could even achieve, ever achieve, we start to see the V shape that we saw in the original uh, on the original screen. If I, if I drop this inductance down a little bit, you can see by having less inductance in the transformer shunt, the shunt windings, what I end up with is better high frequency response and worse low frequency response. 
And this is due to the fact with a coefficient of coupling of 0.995, but less inductance, I have less leakage inductance on the high end, but I have more shunt, um, a lower shunt uh, impedance due to the inductance on the low frequencies. So you have to kind of decide where you want this to be. But here's the V-shape. The V-shape occurs all the time in transformers. Let's just say it's annoying. Um, it's something that you can't get away from, but you can compensate for it. So let's even let this be worse than 0.995. Let's say you're only able to achieve 0.99 coefficient of coupling. 0.99 is a pretty easy thing to do with two windings uh, wrapped on top of each other. So now let's kind of even this out again. I'm evening, evening this out only due to experience, but uh, you could pick something else and still try to have Sim Smith compensate for it. But I'm going to pick six microhenries for my generator side inductance, three microhenries for my load side inductance, and let's add, say, five picofarads across this capacitor, uh, across the uh, uh, inductor, um, excuse me, across the transformer due to the capacitance of the, between the windings. We saw this just drop down a little bit. As we increase the capacitance, we see the, the high frequency response changing, but five picofarads is not that, probably that unreasonable. So let's look at this transformer in comparison to what we had before. So let's go to this plot and let's just get rid of this control, control box. We don't need it anymore. Let's add another load generator and duplicate the transformers. So I mean, now we have two transformers and let's make, let's look at the plot of, of an unmodified one and we're going to look at one that we're going to modify so we can compare the two. The unmodified one will be here. So we'll look at the power at LG1 and we'll look at the SWR at A. So now if we take this one out, we see that the curve that we had with nothing uh, matching the 25 ohms to 50 ohm generator directly. And here we see the two on top of each other, two, trans two identical transformers. So now let's go and use SimSmith to compensate for this. What we have is we have high frequency SWR of about 2.1 to 2.1 to 1, low frequency SWR, maybe about 2.05 to 1. This is like 2.3 to 1. We see power loss, which is mismatched power loss in, in all cases here because we have not compensated, not, excuse me, not considered any core loss. But we see it being worse than it was before with nothing being matched at the ends and better in the center. So let's take this transformer here and add some shunt capacitance to it. You see this done all the time in circuits. You may not have appreciated what people were doing with it, but what they were doing is they were trying to, to compensate out the leakage inductance. And leakage inductance is fairly easy to compensate out for, especially at a single frequency. It's harder to compensate for over a wide band of frequencies. So we're compensating for series inductance here with shunt capacitance. And we see that we've done we've made quite a bit of an improvement. So the blue curve, the blue curve on the bottom is what we have um, now with the transformer compensated. And the red curve up here is the power. So we get more power out everywhere by, by putting these two capacitors in there. That's good. So let's continue a little bit more. So compensating a series inductance with a shunt capacitance is not nearly as good as putting an L network in here. That gives us a better compensation over frequency. So let's put that in there also. This L network will never be a real inductor. We'll just use it. It just, just represents a fractional piece of an inch or two of wire. We'll put something on both sides. Make this a little smaller so we can see it. And let's just um, play with that for a bit. Oh, we can make a lot of improvement there. Wow. This is actually kind of therapeutic and kind of kind of interesting to play with. So we're doing a pretty good job now on the high frequency end. Good power transfer to the end. We see down here, good SWR. The low frequency end is what's in trouble. What's in trouble? We had shunt inductance here, which affected our SWR at the low frequencies. We can we can compensate for shunt inductance with serious capacitance. Now we're going to put that out on the outside of the transformer, not the inside, because this, these are much more important to be close to the transformer than, than these capacitors are. And let's see what we can do here.
Now, the best we can get here is about 1. I don't know, 1.5 to 1, but we only compensated for it with one capacitor. Compensating for it with capacitors on both sides is better. Let's see what we can get if we do that. Uh, much better. Let's make this just a little bit smaller so the graph gets bigger. And let me play here for just a minute or two. That's pretty that's pretty good. Let's see if we can make the, the high frequency end get a little bit better here. All right, well, this is awfully good. It's better than 1.05 to 1 over the whole frequency range, SWR-wise. The power transfer is 13 millo millidB, 0 .1, 0 0.013 dB down at the high end, or no, 003, sorry, 003 dB, 003. Pretty darn good. So this circuit, if you look at the SWR plot or the, the Smith chart now, and all I've done, the only thing I've done differently on this on this that than than normal is I've created a plot command here, which made the stroke wider for the for the plot. So if I took that off and looked at just plotting G here, which is what you normally plot, it's no different than this. Uh, this just made it a little bit um, wider, so I could show it on the very first slide. But this is in a, within a 1.2 to 1 circle. If we put this within a 1.05 to 1 circle, there's a two, okay, there's a 2 to 1 circle out here too. There's a 1.05 to 1 circle there, and it's all within 1.05 to 1. This is pretty cool to say the least. And this is one of the really useful features of SimSmith. So in implementation, you'd build this little transformer here. You'd put these capacitors right on the output of the transformer. This could represent 50 nanohenries of wire represents about two inches of like 12 gauge wire, three inches maybe. You'd put the transformer, here we have eight nanohenries. We could probably almost probably ignore that. Let's see if we ignore it. Well, we can't kind of ignore it. This is a fractional piece of an inch of wire. Um, you can you could, you could get rid of this and adjust this capacitor a little bit. You probably don't need compensation on that side so you don't okay so you just get rid of that but um, and then you, so you'd have a connector over here or your your 50 ohm load your 25 ohm load would be over here this capacitor would be connected to it and then right away you connect this capacitor the transformer this capacitor and then you could have an, a couple inches of wire and then connect this capacitor and that'd be it this would have extremely good performance it would be what you had tried to design before. And if you look inside of any commercially made broadband small transformer, like for many circuits and stuff, you'll see other components in there. And if you look closely, you'll see that they're doing exactly what I did here. SimSmith does this extremely well, and it's actually kind of fun to do. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, give me you know, a thumbs up, like, or something like that. And uh, I'll be back for more videos.